All right, everyone. Welcome along. Tobin's Tuesday. So, critical thought, right? I kind of dropped it right in front of you last week, just as a, an introductor, kind of a, hey, this is what I want to think about, I want to talk about some more. But we didn't really explain why. So, why is critical thought such an important thing, right? Because I know what we've been talking about, you know, we've been talking to you about oh, all sorts of other stuff, all sorts of other things. So where does critical thought come into it, right? The fundamentals of critical thought is it's that peace of mind that's saying, is this really right? Is this right? Am I right? Should I go away and check, right? And it can come across as uncertainty, okay? So you need to be, you need to be careful that there's, because there is a difference between critical thought as a process and uncertainty as just a way of being. So critical thought as a process is about reasoning and evaluating and then being able to use that to hypothesize and evaluate your solutions to a problem, really, isn't it? Yeah. And then lastly, once you've decided on that, it's actually the execution and then the evaluation and the, and the analysis of the success. Okay. So it's a hypothesize, evaluate, execute, hypothesize, evaluate, execute. And that becomes very much a cycle in how you live your life, that you kind of look them through hypothesis. You know, why is this happening? Why? why? You know, so why? Not just accepting, oh, this is the case. Well, why? What, why is that the case? You know, what, what, what do you mean? Why? And that just why is, is vital to critical thought. It's the kind of the tenant that it all hangs off. Why? So now we understand, well, why? <laughs> why? Why are we looking at this? I hear you say, why? Mm -hmm. Why are you making us look at this, Ross? Why? Okay. And the reality is it comes down to one very simple concept. Critical thinking versus bias. The idea of general versus specific, okay? And that, this is it. This is everything we've talked about in like multiple weeks of videos where I've tried to get you to understand and challenge your own biases. And the reason for the challenging is that's to introduce you to critical thought because bias is by definition, it's experience based, okay? But it limits you in what you can do. It limits your capability because your experience is telling you, in this situation, this will be the result. So I don't need to do anything, right? Or this is what I need to do. And it can be positive, it can be negative, right? Because bias is positive as well, but no one looks at it and says, oh, bias is positive. But your expectation, like, ah, oh, do you know what? If I go here to this restaurant that I know over the other ones, I'll get a meal I like, right? There's that's bias by definition, okay? You're ruling out other restaurants because, well, I like that one. I'm just gonna eat there. I like that, I know what I'm gonna get, okay? And no one's gonna challenge you on that. But if you start saying, I don't wanna sit next to a black person or I don't wanna sit next to that person, right? you get challenged. But the fundamentals, the root of it are the same. And that's the key, but that's what you need to understand. I'm not gonna tell you, bias is bad because bias in itself is not bad. It's a generalization tool that enables you as a human being to go through life and to be able to gauge what will happen as a result of an event, okay? This will lead to this, this will lead to this. And I don't need to think about it. I don't need to engage my brain. I can get through life with it. It's a very good generalization tool. It is part of the human toolkit. Nobody out there is non-biased, okay? So don't even let them say that to you, okay? Really, no one is. Critical thinking, though, is where you start to challenge that. And you start to say, well, why am I saying that? So you might say, well, I, like, I love food from that restaurant, right? That brilliant restaurant. I love food from it. They're dead good. Like, well, all right, but there's a new restaurant opened up, you know, should we give it a try? Go, well, I, it's not that one I really like, but, you know, I suppose I should step out of my comfort zone. We'll go and we'll, we'll try food at that restaurant. And it might be something like, oh, that was really nice. That's really good. That's, that's my new favorite restaurant. It might want to go, do you know what? I didn't like that at all. I don't want to go back there. Okay. But 
I would never have done that if I wasn't prepared to override the general and look at the specific. Okay, that's the, the big thing that I want you to really get your head around and understand. Right, this is what we're talking about. We're saying bias and critical thinking and why bias on its own is a bad thing and why bias in data analytics from a data analyst perspective is bad because we as data analysts have to challenge bias. Our role is to say, this is the assumed wisdom, right? People with more money buy more products. It's the assumed wisdom, okay? But we know that's not the case. Right? It's, it's, <laughs> what? Right? We know that's not how it works. We know there are other factors to it just saying, than just saying how much money they have in the bank. There are other factors that will go in. People will go into debt. People will do without other things to get what they want. And there can be aspirational things to that. There can be all sorts of other factors to it. But the clear, basic, well, if they haven't got the money, they won't buy it. I mean, th no, it doesn't work. Okay? Bias <laughs> doesn't quite cut it. Okay? There's, there's more to it than just that general view. Critical thinking is where you, you challenge that. Okay? Now, the problem is that, as we say, bias is part of life. It's there. It's not about fair and unfair and like that. Okay? Bias is not inherently unfair. It's not inherently fair. Bias is you. It's your personal view. Fair and unfair relate to other people, don't they? Because you, nothing to do with that. It's all you, right, who's got the issue, right? Or the, the neurosis or that, I love that restaurant. Don't like any other restaurants, right? Little foibles, whatever you want to call them, right? That's all you, right? That's your little crazy world. Okay, and what goes on in, in, in your head, in my head, and everyone else's heads, right? kind of probably never the twain shall meet. Right? Critical thinking, though, is saying, I'm going to invest some time and effort and energy in rethinking the problem and challenging my assumptions about the situation. And it's that high resource cost that makes critical thought a, a targeted activity. So we could choose to engage our critical, th critical thought circuits at particular times, but I couldn't go through life constantly trying to, oh, 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 okay, no, that would, it, it's not practical. Okay, so I have to acknowledge, you have to acknowledge, we all have to acknowledge that a certain portion of our life will be given over to bias, okay? And it just, it just is. There's no... Okay, to it. Okay, it just is. We can use critical thought to try and reshape and restructure some of our biases. Okay, so if we've got assumptions about a group of people, a type of restaurant, okay, we can use critical thought to start to challenge those and maybe those, those change. Maybe they don't change. Okay, because this is a saying, right? And it's very apt. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not all out to get you. Okay? Right? So, you know, you might have biases, you might go through the critical thought process, and you might still come back with, yeah, I was right the first time, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. It just, you know, it's that you've engaged your brain, challenged your own assumptions, tested some hypotheses, and come back with the result. Right? That's goal number one, isn't it? Yeah? Champion. So something else. I want to talk to you about just another little bit of a message. So as we've been saying, right, we're kind of coming up to the end of a, of a season, really, with Geordie Intelligence, kind of working out what to do. For me, I've got all the commitments that I need to be doing more of now and spending more time doing. Like the consultancy side of the business is pretty flat out right now as we're coming out of COVID. I do need to get some more staff on board. I do need to do some stuff. Geordie Intelligence, if I'm hand on heart honest, it's not been doing as great as I would like. You know, it isn't paying its way yet. So it's still something that I can't prioritize as much as I would like. Okay. But it is something I do see the value in. So I'm going to keep investing my time and effort and money into it. And I hope you'll keep coming and keep joining and the channel will keep growing. And eventually it'll start to pay its own way. Better, I have to say. Right. So what I thought we'd do, because I'm just rushed off my feet now, I'm probably going to be until Christmas at least, is I'll drop back probably to one video a week. 
and we'll try and make that a more technical video. I'm going to say technical because I'm, I'm aiming to get into the technical sides of Power BI and that. And for those you go, well, how come you don't, you don't do like a basic video? I don't do stuff because if you go to learn.microsoft.com, right, all the material that you need is available free, right, to get you from zero to hero in Power BI for free. Right? If you want to sit the exams there, and sit your exams, get your Microsoft certification. It, it makes no sense to me why people are looking for new introductory courses, all these places setting up, oh, I've got videos here, learn Power BI in a day. Oh, 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 right, honestly, it's there. I can do it, okay, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'll do a mean course in terms of taking you from zero to hero in Power BI, we we'll start to talk through it. I can help you support your business, support you and your colleagues, engage with the consultancy we can get on we can do that engage with Geordie intelligence if you want us to come on more training resource wise okay we can do that fit that around you and your business but what doesn't make sense is to me was to start churning out the basics of how to get started now looking at the youtube figures okay, the basics i've done on youtube on excel videos are some of the highest that hits that we're getting like the excel churn video so i don't know i mean We'll start with it, but we'll see what, would, what happens. But I thought we'll do a more technical build. And what I'm going to try and do is do as much of the build on camera as we can. And I'll try and we'll play with the voiceover, whether we do a voiceover for it or like this little demo build kind of thing. We'll see. I don't know. Um, but the idea will be to talk through this is what we're going to do today. This is why we're doing it this way and understand the code that we use, both in M or in DAX, the whys we do that. Um, and I might well see if we can like sneak in some of the little bits of the more advanced stuff to do with M and DAX that you don't really see. Well, M in particular, all right? There's some things with M that I don't see in the videos anywhere that I use in, in consultancy. It'd be nice to start to present some of that stuff, I think. So we'll probably do some things like that. So what do you reckon then? Okay, bias and critical thought. Right? We've kind of introduced the concept, haven't we? That bias and critical thought, are like opposing sides of the same coin almost, you know, like they're going opposite directions, aren't they? That on the one hand, you've got your bias pulling you in that generalistic, this is how I can deal with my life, right? And we, we turn around and say, you shouldn't deal with your life like that, should you? Right? Ask anybody who drives a car, rides a bike, does anything, right? When you start to establish like the memory that you need, muscle memory, whatever you want to call it, to be able to process the core tasks of driving, of riding a bike almost automatically, right? You become able to do more. Okay. And bias is the same. That's bias by definition. It's kind of the definition. Right? So you, you know, I know if I lean this way, my bike's gonna go. I know if I turn the wheel, the car's gonna go, or if I, you know. I don't feel the bite point right on the clutch and the accelerator, you know, all those things that become learned skills. Effectively, that's what bias is, but on a more mental level, that mentally I expect, so I, so I deal with, yeah? It would take somebody quite different, you know, it's, it's a whole new skill that you have to learn, isn't it? If you're saying, well, I'm going to try and learn to do a handbrake turn, I want to try and learn to, right? I want to do donuts, you know, it's a different skill set. So, you kind of start stepping out of that comfort zone that you become quite entrenched in. And you'll find that, you know, if you've been doing, or if you, the more you're entrenched you are, the, the harder it is to break out of that. And that bias becomes such a norm to you that you can't challenge it so easily anymore. So being prepared to regularly challenge your biases, and, you know, it's not so much pick your battles, but you don't challenge all of them. You kind of pick and choose, and you're like, oh, I'm going to challenge this today to think about this why, why why do we do that why why do i eat at that restaurant what what's so good about it and, you know actually challenge yourself to come up with the reason for it and then as i say be prepared to accept the answer of well because it is actually the best for me that's the best thing i like that's what i do right because it's not wrong if it's what you've liked and the main thing is you've taken the time to challenge that assumption so that's what you should do. 
right? So I hope you'll keep coming onto the channel. We've talked a bit about what we're doing and where the future lies, right? We're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep making the content. I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it too. Didn't forget though, like and subscribe down below. Keep coming back for more of the weekend work as it comes through. We'll do the last summit for the weekend this Friday and then we'll roll on the next week into weekend work as we'll start to talk through what's going on with that park run data set. So for now, have a great week. Stay safe. Take care. Ta-da. <laughs>